What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 503rd episode of the Pokemon Podcast. It's super effective. I'm your host, Steve. With me is Greg. Hello. I am fresh from brunch. We went back to Grumpy's for the first time in a year. Wow. And there was nobody there. When is, <laughs> gee, it's been over a year since you and I went yeah. there. Yeah. It's been a bit. Uh, everything's still the same. I want to shag painting more. Every time I go there, I have shag envy. One day uh, I'll be rich enough. Will also here. Yeah, I have added two things to my, or I have two things now on my don't ever do this list. Number one, never read the YouTube comments, which I still <laughs> make Bye. the mistake of doing. Number two, never listen to this program, like a, in a previously recorded episode of this program on the morning that we record it, because now I just, I hate both of you. What? And I just want to spend the next 90 minutes telling you why you're wrong about everything. Why? What are, what are you mad at? What could you possibly be mad so about So many now? things. So why are many yeah, things. Yeah, we're always right. What? Why are you so hateful? We have good takes. That's because of my East Coast upbringing. I mean, I don't listen to Drive Check. You're wise not to. <laughs> Where do we begin today? Where do we begin? Uh, I'm playing Unite again. Uh, we could start with Unite, I guess. Uh, okay, so here's here's the show. We got, uh, I think we we all done massive mass outbreaks. Want to talk about that? Um, Unite was on the list. There's some Pokemon Go stuff. There's a Minnesota store getting broken into and Pokemon <laughs> stuff was stolen through the wall. So we Kool-Aid we have all of that. Style. Um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news of, at the start of this program, but there is nothing new in regards to Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> oh, that attitude. We can make up a whole bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Wait, did you guys see that YouTube clip that I posted? I put it on Twitter. Dang. It was the episode where it was Al, because we were talking about the Legends Arceus spoilers, and I literally said they haven't made a Pokemon game in Spain yet. Find when it on you, Twitter. When did you put this up? You're in my list. Like three days ago, three or four oh. days ago. Then yes, I saw it, and I promptly forgot. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess uh, let's let's start with Pokemon Unite. That's a game. Where where where? <laughs> Where, so I, I logged into Unite because I wanted to get my free Pokemon Day stuff. You had to log in two days, one day for the hat, one day for the shirt. You didn't have to play any games. There is a uh, walk. Also, for the record, uh, a lot of people make very nice YouTube comments, Will. So thank you if you're watching on YouTube and you <laughs> left a very nice comment. And a lot of people make a atrocious people YouTube comments. Look, it... Look, if you Look, know nothing 90... about Will at this point, understand there is no positive view. There is only negative view. Yes. So correct. You can this is have, correct. You can have 50 million positive things. We love Will. Will is super cute. Will is the hottest. Will is amazing. And there'll be one that says, what even is that accent? And that is all we will hear about correct. for five yes. years. True. Yes. Also, True. if you do say something nice, I become suspicious of what are you trying to get from me? It's a very East Coast I, attitude. <laughs> I would say that like 99% of the negative comments are usually in regards to me, though. <laughs> usually yeah, not you two. It's the 1%. Because we don't care about you. Yeah, yeah. Usually like the 1% is like, your show is too gay. The, but then <laughs> well, yeah, the, we like, get that a lot. The like other 99% is like, Steve has really Look, bad you opinions. cannot say... In the winter months, the show is too gay because neither Will nor I are wearing tank tops. Correct. That <laughs> is a summertime happenstance it's a only. summertime complaint. Hey, Where am I Pokemon you know, Unite? You can go. walk Cramorant in Pokemon Unite, and that's the only way that I've gotten Cramorant's license because <laughs> I was not going to buy that thing. Oh, you get its license from yeah, that? Yeah, I got its license for that. Okay, yeah, yeah. So th- so there was there was the Pokemon Day stuff with the Hoopa and the Baking Donuts. I don't think this is ever talked about in the show. Uh, 
But there's like you know how Pikachu and ketchup is like canonical. Is yeah. That the right yes. Word? Yes. Yep. Very much so. Hoopa and donuts is canonical because they have rings. That I understand that the <laughs> I get why. <laughs> I don't know when it started, though. Was it like a movie thing? I mean, in 1998, they had an idea for Pocket Monsters. Uh-huh. Okay. And then eventually, they're like, well, what do, What else do we make? And somebody said, well, how about rings? And like, cool. How, how do we make rings promotional? What can we sell that are rings? Donuts. Everybody loves donuts. And thus, it was born. Yeah. I, it was, sure. Except for Steve, who will not do due diligence in his donut places, and then complain about them. Oh. That, that Talk to Hoopa. That donut place is very expensive. Uh, did you unlock Hoopa, or did you do enough donuts? No, I'm halfway to unlocking Hoopa. I'm like I have not done enough donuts. So I was like, if I'm going to play this game, I'm going to buy the $35 Cramorant skin. Oh, I watched this in real time. I'm zoning out for this. And to be fair... I've only given this game $20, and that was day one. And since then, the Pokemon company has given me three stipends, and I think each stipend was like five, 3,500 gems, 3,500 gems, which is $50, I believe. So I have a ton of gems that I have never spent because, you know, I bought the business suit for, for Venusaur. Yeah. Um, I remember that. And I what? bought the li- Give those give them to me. I can buy something with them. <laughs> I've never bought a character with them because like you want to use your coins on characters, not gems. And I was like, I'm not gonna buy the cowboy I think it's called Frontier. Frontier Cramorant unless I'm gonna play a match of this game. I'm not gonna do the thing, I'm not gonna log in, get my rewards, buy a skin, and then not play. So my Twitch chat was like, just play one game. And I was like, all right, here we go. We're buying the cram skin. And it's not in the store at all. What? Yeah, it's not. I have I have I have gems to burn and it is not there. And I'm looking online to see if this was limited. Because there was that Lucario for Halloween mm-hmm. and it said limited time will expire. And I don't remember that at all. And I'm, I'm thinking, do I go back to, like, an old Twitch VOD when I first looked at this so I can double check if it said limited or not? And then everyone was like, no, it never said that it was limited. I was like, I don't even know. I, I get why you would remove, a hol- like, a holiday skin. But but you're you, we're still in season four or five or whatever. We're still in cowboy season because mm-hmm. I don't care about cowboy stuff. I, I have zero interest in this battle pass. The final thing is like Cowboy Zero Aura. I have no interest in that. I don't want my character to have a cowboy hat or cowboy boots or uh, uh, the, the the little bow tie. I can't remember what it's called. Um, Bolo. The bow. I don't want any of that. Not buying the battle pass. But we have a Walk with Cramoran event. We have a Cowboy Battle Pass. Frontier. Frontier Battle Pass. Why? Is my Cramorant gone? And so if you go into where the cooking Cramorant is to like adjust, the cowboy Cramorant shows up and it says 2,199 Aos gems, which is, I think, $35 because the 2,499 Aos gems, which is like Ninetales and Machamp and the Lucario that got pulled, that's $40. And I went to go click. I was like, there it is. I found it. For some reason, it's not in the store. It's right here. I click it and it says... Not available. Denied. Not available. And I found one Reddit post that was somebody <laughs> saying, "What ha-? they said that this is the worst part. They said, hey, I finally purchased gems for the first time to buy this Cramorant skin. And I went to go and buy it. And it's gone. And... And no one knows why. And I went to refund the gems, and I was told by support gems are non-refundable. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, it makes sense that the gems are non-refundable. But if you can see it, because I we saw on stream, you can clearly see the skin under. Like you have to go, you kind of have to dig for it, but you can like clearly find it. And it says like buy, 
It has a purchase button. You wouldn't click that button if you don't have enough gems because it would error out, right? So you well, leave to buy the gems. You don't have enough gems. Yeah, it would say you don't have enough gems. So you would leave, you would add the gems, you would come back, you would hit purchase, then it would say not available. I don't know. I don't know why the skin is not available. I don't know why this game would not want to take my money. The only thing I can think <laughs> of is the skin caused a game breaking bug. And they didn't know how to fix the bug, so they pulled the skin. How would a skin? Oh, the animation of it could it could do something. Look, there was one point where Kramerant was invincible for like three days in that game. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and people people would on the other team would see you were playing Kramerant and they would quit. They would <laughs> well, forfeit. It's valid. Anyways. You didn't buy the skin. You I can't. did not buy the skin. And I still there's have no to... reason listed. So we know they listen to this show. Right. So we need explanation. We need an exclusive press release sent to Steve. Uh, it should say, Dear Steve and Cramorant fans around the world, all three of you, please understand our mistake. And here's what happened. So... It's been several months since you played Unite. How do you feel about it now, Greg? It's like I never stopped playing. <laughs> it, all the frustrations that existed before still exist today. So I will fun. say, I will say, I tried out uh, Zarina and I tried out Decidueye, and I really like both how both play. But the problem still exists that if you you have to buy up the items to 30 because all of them use different items according to everybody and people still don't communicate <laughs> i'm like how one it takes forever to get a match now because there's so few people playing it did take us really we, we played what two matches together i think yeah we lost one that we won one yeah so it takes forever to match and the people who are left still don't say like i'm going to this lane still and you still have four people picking jungle, and then they all go into jungle, and one person's left going, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what? Uh, I'm Bottom. alone. Once again, I am a Eldegoss by myself at the bottom, getting wrecked by Lucario. And they haven't done a patch balance in a long time, and I'm like, do you just not care anymore <laughs> about the game? Because... Well Things still feel is supposed real broken. To eventually come out. <laughs> I look, I I had a pretty good time playing. Um, I, I'm playing again. Like it, it reminded me of how fun the game is, but quickly also reminded me how absolutely frustrating the game is. Like in I played, I think I played like 20 more matches now. Because I was like, I'm just going to see how ranked is. I want to play these new characters. People are still surrendering within the first two minutes. And if you don't surrender when they want to, they just drop. <laughs> and then Quality. you just have a thing sitting in the base. It's like, well, if you're not going to quit when I want you to, then I'm going to make sure you can't play the game. Is there and a it's penalty like, for dropping? Huh? Do they get penalized for dropping? Only if you report them. I forgot there was a report button. Which is now hard to find. They have hidden in their menus how you get to be able to report a person. Because it took me 10 minutes to find it. I'm like, oh, there it is. I'm reporting you again. And I'm back on my reporting stuff. Because I'm like, you You should not have a good ranking. But yeah, they've, hidden is... it so, they've hidden it so far in the menus that it's hard to report. Plus, you have to use their bad keyboard to be able to report somebody. It's like... You are you are doing nothing to make the game player base of your game good. Like you 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 you're just letting awful people run rampant still. This was my worry for the game is that people would get frustrated and then they would leave and then they would not come back and I don't think like that would be me. You could be the biggest Dragonite fan in the world. And you might grab some of the Dragonite fans to come back, but 
I, I, I don't see, like, if, if you didn't enjoy the gameplay and they finally added your favorite Pokemon and you come back and you still experience all the frustrations, you're not going to suffer through playing your favorite Pokemon mm-hmm. through this game. The only thing I can think of at this point is, like, the World Championship sparking people to be excited to want to come back. You see this thing, you see, you see the same things that happen with, like, Dota or League where people get burnt out from those MOBAs and then all of a sudden they see a really great world championship and there's usually an update around there and there's usually a bunch of free stuff and all of that combined people get excited and they come back to the game. This is also a thing that happened I saw firsthand with people that watch competitive Pokemon. Like they they sat down, they watched the world championship, it was re- they saw the energy of other people getting excited and then they they want to partake in that and they want to like l- at least learn more. And maybe like buy the newest game or 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 whatnot. So my my worry was I'm gonna come back. It's just gonna be really hardcore or really salty people. And I, I wouldn't say it took too long for us to find a match, but it was significantly longer than it was back in like November. Like w- I think we waited in queue of like a whole ninety seconds. I've never waited ninety yeah. seconds for a ranked match. Yep. Uh, I mean, and playing solo wasn't much better. I it would often be a minute before I would get something just as a solo queue, on on no matter which queue I picked. Although standard goes obviously faster, but <laughs> if you think people in ranked could care less, people in standard could are even lower. They're like, nope, it didn't go. The first five seconds didn't go the way that I wanted. I'm out. <laughs> like why are you playing this game i had that thought when my first my very very first match this weekend i like missed my whirlpool on the apom and i was like well time to concede can <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's fine to have the thought but like d- it if you are having such a miserable time in the first five seconds that you just want to be out stop playing the game I mean, stop ruining it for other people. Because when you drop in a game that is five versus five and suddenly it takes the game 40 seconds to finally say, oh, somebody dropped and do you want to make them a robot? The damage is done. You are not coming back from that. And the robots are bad. Yeah. I mean, I've been in one robot match and I'm like, None of you are doing it, and I can't even tell you what to do. I'm are they playing just a bunch against of robots that go in circles, going Psy- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just like that's what they should do when somebody drops, replace the Psyduck. <laughs> it's just one of those things where I'm like, I, I have enough fun in the game that I want to play it, but you do nothing to make your player base good and. Even reporting a highly offensive name, which I ran into, is incredibly difficult mm. because you've hidden reports so far in the menus. Do you think that most of your problems would have been, would be solved if you had a consistent four other people to play with? I think half of the problems would be solved, yeah. But again, we'd have to communicate outside the game. Mm-hmm. To compensate for that one person that's like, I mean, I'm that's out. how that game works best. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just, w- it... when I was when I was in that like Twitch tournament for Twitch Rivals, there and I was playing with people that were, you know, they wanted to win, right? And we had a bunch of practice matches, and I I could already there was already a little pushback on my end personally. I don't think I've discussed this, like. There were there were there were uh, uh, there was a person on the team that was not happy I was playing Cramorant uh, because Cramorant was not a meta pick at the time, and so that was fine. I was I I, I like and when I filled out the form, I, that's what I wrote. Like there was a draft. I was not one of the team captains. I just got drafted. But in my notes, it was like I only play Cramorant. <laughs> 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 like I. I, I, and there's no benefit. There would have been no benefit of me picking a more meta character when then I would have had to relearn the meta. Um, and they were also making us play on Samsung phones, and it was like, all right, now nah, so I have to now learn a touchscreen way of interfacing with this game. 
and even though I, I was playing with really good people and they were communicating, there was still frustration after some matches. Like, there was one point in one of the games where they told me to alt. I think it was to, like, help burn down Zapdos quicker. And I've played Cramorant so much, like, I'm thinking in my head, like, no, this this is not a good alt. This is not a good use to your alt. But when you have, like, two or three people, one being the team captain being like, alt now. Well, if I don't alt, they're going to be mad at me. Yep. S so I do alt, and it doesn't work. Like, it did not It did not burn down Zapdos enough. And then, of course, the team swoops in because my alt is over, and then they take Zapdos, and we lose Zapdos. And I feel like I, I can tell that they're frustrated because, like, it didn't work. But also, that was their call. And, like, I knew it didn't work. Yeah. And I knew, like, repositioning my Cramorant more down and alting there to prevent them from even coming up would have been the better play. Um so yeah, you still you still get that frustration, um, and then you see like you, you do see some competitive teams that have been playing very long together, and I feel like you never see them frustrated because like they're just all on the same page. They're all just yeah. like, well, they're a machine at that point, right? Because they've been playing for so long. Like that. Like if you if you started a team when this game came out, and you're still a team, <laughs> <laughs> and there hasn't been any drama. <laughs> Uh, you, you probably are like, yep, we just lost this game because we messed up. I mean, uh, the, the shame is, is the game, I, I think the game is really good still, like, it's still a good casual introduction to that style of game. And I think, I think there's a couple of things that I'm, that I ran into, like, you've introduced a bunch of Pokemon, but. There's really not a lot of difference between playing Alola Nine Tails as a ranged attacker and playing Decidueye as a ranged attacker or playing Gardevoir as a ranged attacker. They do slightly different things, but I don't think it makes enough that it's like a boon and a and a and a weakness because. If you know how to play one type of all rounder, you can pretty much play them all because the gameplay isn't that different. But also, none of them start, they don't start feeling unique. Like, I think that's why people were excited about Hoopa, though. I mean, yeah, Hoopa's, I don't, I don't even know. Hoopa, I've seen people play Hoopa, and I'm like, I don't understand a single thing you're doing. None of what you're doing makes sense. And maybe Hoopa is like, hey, our characters need to be a little bit different. Because yeah, like I I can I can play Cramorant, and then I can go to Blastoise, and one's an attacker and one's a defender, but they're like they're they're still pushing water in different directions. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know I I I still don't really know how to feel about this game. Ultimately, I I do think that they are beginning to hit that sort of MOBA toxicity bad player problem and i don't oh they and, hit that early on <laughs> yeah but like hiding the ability to report them making that so difficult doesn't help matters at all um the, the, you know, but do you, you think it, do you think it's just an illusion where you feel better when you report and like nothing actually happens well i mean there's times when like if i can say this person dropped i report them for dropping and the game goes yep i've confirmed that they dropped and i'm taking away points oh from yeah, them. yeah 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 that yeah i was like okay great i am justified in what i saw happening um and i feel like yeah i've done something that maybe will alert them and others to be like okay you've gone down on the ranking but the problem is, is i think since like even the good job menu is hard to find um like you can't go into that final screen and click on a person and get all the options anymore. You have to go over next to next to the menu, then get the right menu, then click on the person, then oh, you get yeah, all the Oh, yeah, I forgot things. about that. It, it, it makes it hard. So if a bunch of people don't do it, because now it is more difficult, you have to really be like, I want to make this game better. And you are discouraging your player base from doing that easily so it doesn't happen. So ultimately, even though I did do it and, like, I would say half of them were like confirmed. We've taken away the points. I know that nobody else 
bother to try to find how to do this because it was a pain for me. But I'm like, I am committed to trying to make this a better experience. Ariel's like, just move on to the next match. And it <laughs> it doesn't improve anything. Like, it is so hard to try to force change. And by hiding it, they've made it even harder to do. It's like, okay, well, the, even the company doesn't want this to get better. They just want you to move on and hopefully your next set of people are better. And it will never be better because the person that's the problem, the people that just stop playing and quit don't get punished in any way like even in final fantasy you will get timed out for a while and people are like okay yeah and i have an unlimited block list which i do not have in unite it's it's a it's a video game that's for sure <laughs> it's free so it's i'm not giving them more money sure. uh speaking of free uh, you. This is your week to get your shiny Galarian Zapdos in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Oh, do I got to sign up? I guess it's technically not free. You got to buy a sixty dollars game, mm. um, and you have to have Nintendo Online. You can register now until March tenth until four p.m. PST. I will say this every time because we will have people in our Slack or Discord or the Twitch streams be. Did I miss the sign-up period? Yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> if you are asking if you missed the sign-up period, you have missed it. It goes until March 10th, 4 p.m. PST. If you're listening to this right now and your Switch is in front of you and you're playing Legends, save the game. Leave it. Go into Sword and Shield. Go into the verse menu. Sign up. Here's the deal. You do not need your team ready. You don't need anything. You just have to hit, I want to participate in this online competition that will happen this weekend. That's all. Once you are ready to do your three matches, you have to do three. One, two, three. I, I, I admit that I made a graphic back on January 15th that said you had to do one match. And then before the Articuno, I changed to three matches. Because I got my information from Serebi, and then Mr. Joe Serebi said, I never said three, I said one. And then I was like, no, you have multiple tweets where you were telling people to do one match. This is what I based <laughs> my graphic off of, Mr. Yeah. Serebi. <laughs> there was misinformation around there. It's three matches, so I'm sorry if you participated in the Articuno. I did make an updated graphic. I did make an updated tweet. Same three matches here. Don't need a team ready. Go into... Versus Battle Stadium online competitions. Search for online competitions. Sign up. Then this weekend, you need to do three matches. Does not matter whether you win or lose. You can bring your Wooloo and your Blip Bug and your Jigglypuff and your Pikachu. You can lose your three matches. And then once the tournament is over and the rankings are posted, you will get your shiny Galarian Zapdos. And I have to do this all again for Moltres. And we will let you know when that is. But. If you're listening to this podcast on Monday, March 7th, you have three days to sign up. Uh, we talked about the, we talked about Pokemon Unite. Speaking of competitions, uh, they are they added the 2022 Pokemon Europe International Championship, um, and that will. Feature uh, TCG, uh, Pokemon Go, Pokemon Tournament DX, and then obviously Sword and Shield. Uh, it will award championship points. It will be in uh, Frankfurt, Germany from April 22nd through April 24th. The, uh, the Messe Frankfurt is the event location. Um, and it says that it will be live streamed. So I don't know if it's live streamed like actually live or sometimes they do that thing where they live stream it and then they broadcast it like a week later. I don't know. It was all weird with like player cup stuff of how they like recorded and broadcasted that stuff. But um, it's if you're in the Germany area, or if you're going to this says you'll be able to do badge and check-in on, on Thursday, April 21st. Master Division will begin on Friday, April 22nd. 
junior and senior division will begin on Saturday, April 23rd. So that's cool. Something's happening over in Europe, so glad, <laughs> glad they're moving along. I mean, there's a lot of things happening over in Europe. Okay. Um I think we will take a break because we got – no, let's do the Pokemon Go news, and then we'll take a break because then we have massive mass outbreaks, and then we have the, the, the money stuff. So Pokemon Go news here. Season of Alola. Or do Alola. we want to cover our local store? <laughs> yes. Uh, season of Alola here. They have put Tapu Koko – and Rockruff into raids. Tapu Koko cannot be shiny. Rockruff can be. This th there this goes to raids until March fifteenth. Sorry, Tapu Koko at least goes until March fifteenth. In the wild, they put Rowlet, Litten, Poplio, Pico Peck, Young Goose, Comfey, and Jangma O. Um, I found a Jangma O. That was very exciting. I have not. Uh, I'm very mad. Young Goose can be shiny, and Comfey... I, I've seen really no one talk about this. Comfey is a regional exclusive in Hawaii. It just what? feels like no, no one Dang. even talks that Comfey is in the game. You were just there, Will! I know, you I missed what? it! All right, I will go to Hawaii. Let's go. <laughs> Business <laughs> expense. Yeah, fire it up. Let's go. Obviously, all those Pokemon can evolve. And then in eggs, they put Young Goose, Pika Peck... Rowlet, Litten, Poplio, Rockruff, and Jagma O in eggs. Uh, Rockruff and Young Goose can be shiny from eggs. They also announced the next community day, which is uh, on March 13th. So we'll have to probably record Saturday next weekend and not Sunday. Um, also, same as Pikmin community day. Uh, it is Sandshrew and Alolan Sandshrew. Sandshrew, get the community day. Which I think is fine, right? Like, this is... I'm all right with this. Meh. I mean, I'll go. I like Sandshrew. I mean, I think here's I, the I thing. Think I have, having, like... having two possible Pokemon to be shiny... I that don't is want true. Reg I don't want regular Sandshrew to be shiny. I want my Icy. Well, they both will be. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure but it'll I, be 50 you know I'm going to get one over the other, and we have, like, 80 of the other ones, and you're going to be like... Will's been like, I have 50 Alolan, and I'm not going to trade you any. I'm just going to send them into the wood chipper. Why wouldn't I trade them? And I don't <laughs> send any to the wood chipper. Wow. I'm waiting for the amount of glacial lures, lures that will be dropped that won't no, actually stop. No, they're somebody's going to put mossy, mossy lures, lures all everywhere. Over <laughs> yeah, whoever was at Mall of America on Johto Fest and decided to drop so many mossy and gla like you are preventing my eevees from evolving i do not need <laughs> leafions and glaceons i need out like i had you, I mean, we actively had to walk away from certain spots to evolve eevees to be fair that's the shenanigans will and i do we just sometimes. didn't happen we just happened to do it that time <laughs> Um, different Pokemon appearing in the wild. Uh, so they said that there was some seasonal changes. So if you're playing in the city, you're going to see Alolan Rotata, Alolan Meowth, Magnemite, Alolan Grimer, Jolteon, Makuhito, Minchino, and more. If you're playing near a forest, you're supposed to be seeing Paris, Execute, Apom, Pineco, Electrike, Rufflet, and Young Goose. If you're playing in the mountains, I don't know how, like accurate this stuff is this is what they're saying but i mean look at your google maps uh you're gonna see cubone alolan diglett alolan geodude flareon ball toy golet and archon i don't think i've ever seen a wild archon if you're playing near water you're gonna see an alolan executor star you dratini vaporeon tortuga uh frillish and corfish the northern hemisphere is getting lotad bagon snivy tepig oshawott Spring, Deerling, and Fungus. And the Southern Hemisphere is getting Nin Nincada, Beldum, Sawaddle, Autumn Deerling, Chespin, Fennekin, and Froakie. That's weird. I caught a Froakie this morning. 
I don't have answers for you. I have not found enough Yungus to evolve. And I feel what? like... Oh, you know you have to evolve them during the day, right? You can't evolve yeah. them at night. I Ooh, feel like goose? that is... Yeah, that's yeah. the thing in Go. You have to, it has to be daylight to evolve. Oh, but I don't even have the candies to evolve. What, like I just They're not appearing around me on a regular basis. Really? I think I've gotten a Lizzie. lot of Litten. And a lot oh, of Oh, yeah, I'm almost in Cinnaroar territory. But I have not seen... I've seen maybe one or two. Oh, you know, so I, I only have 50 Young Goose candy, and I've pinapped all of them. Yeah, I have 45. Because I did pinap, like, one of them, I think. I'm evolving one it, right now, though. It's why you get my collection challenge. Um... I think this, to me, this launch is better than how they did Gen 6. Like, it was easy to find the three starters. They're, I feel like they're, they're spawning very, very well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like the other spawns are, are as terrible. As a surf skit appears in my house. There's nothing around me right now. I don't know. I I I'm pretty all right with Pokemon Go. It's been it's it's been fine. I mean, it's fine. It's always just fine. <laughs> I'm never super excited about Go. I enjoyed the Johto tour a lot. Uh, it was fine. I'm looking forward to the community day. I am still not a huge fan of Go Battle League. That's its own problem. <laughs> There is there is a bunch of stuff regarding Go Battle League. Battle League. They're calling it the interlude season. And uh, great great cup will happen from now until March eighth. See, here's the thing about Go Battle League, though. Like, I only want to do Great Cup, and it's like Great Cup March first through March eighth. Also, the Johto Cup, and then March. 8th through the 15th, it's Ultra League and Ultra Premium Classic. Like, I'm out. I'm no longer, like... What, what's the difference? Uh, Ultra League is 2,500 CP. Great League is 1,500 CP. So you start getting a lot of, like, legends um, mm -hmm. in Ultra League. And you start getting a lot of Pokemon that, like, require the buddy boost. Mm. So, like, some Pokemon might cap out at, like, 2,300. So, like, you buddy boost it, and then it's, like, 2,499. And all of a sudden, the Pokemon that was kind of bad is, like, really, really good. But you need that buddy boost stuff. There's not, I don't think there's, like, a single Pokemon in Great League that benefits the friendship buddy boost at all. Because of just how CP works and how most will go over that anyways. There's, like, a new time research that keeps track of your battles, but it gives, like, the worst amount of star. Like, I don't know who made this timed research battle, but it's, like, win a battle, 100 Stardust. And you're, like, why would it? This, this <laughs> is not convincing. I got 100 Stardust by staring at the sun. And then there, at one point, it's, like, Please win. Please don't it, stare at the sun. It's, like, 64 battles, 3,000 Stardust. And it's, like, what? I mean, if you like battling, that's but, nothing. But if you like battling, that is actually literally nothing. That's like a bad reward. <laughs> it's a really bad reward, honestly. Anyways, Alola is here. I'm I wouldn't be surprised if we get a Pika Peck community pretty soon. Like what else would they do? I don't think they're I don't I think they're probably gonna save Litten. Well, we haven't even gotten we haven't gotten Froakie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The other ones. <laughs> I was gonna say we haven't gotten those starters, but those starters are what they're gonna probably do for the summer, right? Like we will probably get maybe Fennekin. Maybe they've changed their mind about Community Day altogether, and it's a whole different thing now. Maybe. Maybe we'll that be getting two Community Niantic Days a month again. Put effort into <laughs> changing it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think they've been on autopilot for community day for quite a while. I, just flip the switch. I mean, do we think they're not going to do a starter at all in the season of Alola? Season of Alola goes right. till June 1st. Just like they didn't do a starter no. in the season of Kalos. Do you think it's going to be like Alolan... Sandshrew, I would, I, this I time. would and bet then... it's going to be like Alolan Sandshrew, Alolan Grimer, and regular Grimer, and... Alolan Vulpix and regular Vulpix? Yeah. What about Cubone and Alolan Cubone? There's no like. <laughs> <laughs> I know it stinks, but I want to be able to evolve into an Alolan Marowak and be happy about it. What about Kecleon Community Day? It happened. We just didn't know when it was, and nobody saw it. Yeah. Uh all right. Well, let's take a Remember break. That one summer, whatever. He's like, "How is Milton in this?" <laughs> Look. <laughs> Meltan is a good boy. We all like Meltan. Nope. Will Will still doesn't have a Mel Metal in in Pogo. He transferred it to Let's Go. Correct. You gotta get another Mel Metal because you, gotta you use also it for Team wouldn't let me use my no. super candies you to do get. Do not get to what? use rare candy How? on Meltan. You could do that on your own in the privacy of your own home, and Steve would have no idea. I just you know, don't but he's him. very influential. That's the problem. He is? Yes. See, you I do to... most things that he says not to do, and He's my like life a is golden. You, you have to save your rare candy for Volcarona, Will. There is, they've never even announced Volcarona. <laughs> but when they do, you'll <laughs> they have the candy. On. They moved on through like no, multiple regions. Just... Use them all to power up Victini to super level. Yeah, that's a good. There you go. Anybody, every, everybody knows that level one hundred Larvesta is much better than Volcarona. So it's true. String shot. All right, let's take a break. We got to talk about a robbery. We got to talk about uh, massive mass outbreaks. So we will be right back. And we are back from our break. All right, we did it. We tried it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> massive mass outbreaks mmos finally came to pokemon yeah, do not <laughs> i mean will have you wrong. tried these did you do those i started the research story but i have a particular issue with pokemon legends that i'm just about ready to throw my switch out the front door into the street and say actually i'm done with video games altogether if this is how you're going to treat me what's your issue with legends <sighs> no <Noble> larvesta <laughs> no let me put it this way because you're gonna get there before everybody else there is a gentleman standing at the front gate of jubilife city who wants to see a floatzel, a buizel, that is over two foot eight. Four. No. Oh, yeah, you're right. Eight. Yeah, two I eight or, uh, two eight or larger. I go in, catch ten buizel a day for weeks now, and have not yet gotten one that was over two foot eight. Get good, noob. I am sick of this. So give him an alpha. <laughs> I, I haven't found an alpha buizel. I think they're on the... I go in every day. I All I want to do on is cobalt. finish this research task. And it will not let me. Maybe a massive mass outbreak of weasels will... Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'll problem. fix it yeah, for you. There you go. That'll there solve you the go. problem. That was a good transition, too. Uh, I have a, I, I like the concept of massive mass outbreaks, and I have fun with it. But here's the big but: the game's Pokedex is not big enough to support what they are doing. When I go into Fairland Highlands or whatever. Obsidian and I pay, field lands? Yeah. <laughs> fair land, fair, fair. And I pay my five berry tax to the Munchlax. 
and four of my massive mass outbreaks are of the Kadabra line. I have no interest in Kadabra. I don't... Uh, uh, can there be... In future Pokemon games, hear me out. I know, I know, I know, like, oh, Steve's negative about the new feature. Hear me out, though. Everyone's going to agree with me. Is there a checkbox we can hit in future Pokemon games that say, like, I'm interested in your game. Remove all the Kanto Pokemon. Can, like, can I just wow. hit that checkbox? We have Jake. learned, we have learned there is no toggle. So, no. I just, and this, this, this is my personal problem. Doesn't apply to everyone, but as somebody who had put a thousand hours into Let's Go, as somebody who had shiny hunted a lot in prior game before Let's Go, as somebody who played uh, uh, six years of Pokemon Go, I, I, I have every single Kanto <laughs> shiny. I have them all. I, I, I just, I, I, and I think some of it is like. Like they know that I feel like there's not a coincidence of community day shinies and Pokemon we've put into this game, like Sfeel, like like uh, Kada like Abra, Kadabra, the Turtwig, Chimchar. Like I just don't need. If you were featured in community day, I have thirty of you, <laughs> but you don't have them in Giganta Balls. That's true. Mm. Again, this is this is a very me problem, but I do like it is so cool to see like twelve different outbreaks, and then when you when you pay the the berry tax, sometimes I don't pay the berry tax because I I get disappointed right off the bat. But when you pay the berry tax and it's like oh four of these are a ponyta, two of these are happyini, another four are Kadabra, like we have one Zarua. I guess I'll do the Zerua, even though I have the shirt. Like, like there's nothing. I, j I just don't think the Pokedex is big enough. And I think that you start to see that, like, this Pokedex is pretty tiny. Or if you're, you're still... just playing the game too much. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think <laughs> you I play have. it for a living. I think you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I do play it a lot. Look, it took me a full month to finish the Pokedex and to beat <laughs> the final person. Game Gobbler. Mm -hmm. I and haven't was, done that yet. I haven't even caught a weasel that's over <laughs> two foot eight. <laughs> so the real game begins. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't like that it's timed. <laughs> oh, see, uh, that's what I do like. I feel like I I do like. I've already felt like there's just not enough Pokemon <laughs> in these areas to make this feel because I still feel like. If you're trying to fill out the Pokedex because you aren't getting ones that you need, the fact that like seven of them are Abra and none of them are still the ones that you're missing isn't like a great feeling. Um, have you heard? So you know you had your YouTube about the save at camp, go back to Jubilee. Yeah, I am hearing reports that that is no longer working. Correct. What? So when they updated to Daybreak and added the massive mass outbreaks, uh, they they had it where pretty much if you if you go back, the the thing is not the saving and resetting; it's the initially going back into Jubilife will reset the outbreaks that are there. So like if you were doing a Weasel outbreak. And a shiny Buizel popped up, and you saved the game, and then you f and then you failed the Buizel, so you relaunched the game. It's not going to remove the outbreak. You'll still be in it. Granted, if like my video says, if there are three or less Buizel, and one is shiny, and you save and reset, it will force fail the outbreak because there's not four, there's three. So don't do that. Um, but now if you if you save in camp, check the weasels, there's no shiny, you then um, restart the game and then go through Jubilife and come back out, it's very, 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 very likely that the outbreak just won't appear anymore. Which is like, if this is how they want us to play their game, I understand. There, I, I see two sides, right? I think... 
if, if you're specifically looking for uh, like a Hesuian Growlithe, I'm like that's the shiny you want. And once you find the outbreak, you you prior to this update, you could save, you could grind it out. Eventually, you'll get your shiny Growlithe, and then you're th th you did it right. Same for your Gumi or your Zarua or whatever else you're looking for. There was a certain point for me that I just didn't do that anymore. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to check this outbreak. If it's not shiny, I got other things to do in this game. I'll, I'll worry about hunting it later. And I think that's how they want you to play. I mean, I think that's kind of clear. Like, they don't want you to save yeah. and reset. Like uh, it was yeah, kind of yes. kind of cl clear in in the uh, sword and shield. They didn't want you to reset for those starters. They wanted you to pick it and move on. Like go play our game. So the first side I see is like, I don't know, if they spent the sixty dollars. Let them play the game however they want to play the game. <laughs> yep. The other part is, I don't think it's really that much more difficult. Like, it's not like there aren't other ways to get the Growlithe. Like, you can you can get your research level to max, and there are places where Growlithe spawns. And while you might not find a Growlithe, like, so you don't even need an outbreak. You just go to the top of the mountain in Cobalt. There's, like, five of them up there. You could check them. If they're not shiny, just fly back, read, do it again. Like, they're always going to be up there. They're never not going to be up there. But with massive mass outbreaks, the likelihood of you finding Growlithe is actually pretty high. Like, I feel like every time I go to the Highland Fieldlands, one of them is always a Growlithe. So it's it's like they, they were like, we don't want you to reset this, but also here's a bunch of new outbreaks, and there's like 12 of them. And pick which one you want, and you're on a time limit, which is why I think I like the time limit. I think if they didn't instill a time limit, because the because those have increased shiny odds and they're not as increased as the the original ones, I feel like some people would would be like, I have to check all of them before I go back. Okay. But well, and then they're not playing the game again. But they are playing the game. Mm. They are playing the game. But I but have you done some of these? They're so resource intensive. Yeah. And the thing is, like, because they're I, – I think what I like about them is they're forcing you to it, – it, it's kind of like the, the difference between, like, Max Raids and then Dynamax Adventure. Like, same core concept at the end of the day, but they're forcing you to play it in a different way, and I think that's what I like. Like, here's 12 of them. You have 10 minutes. What – like, you have to come up with a plan, and you can't just – sit on the edge of the map and throw feather balls and like wait for them to calm down and throw feather balls because you'll run out of time. So it kind of forces you to be like a little bit more aggressive or if you're not that aggressive type of person to like kind of pick and choose. Like you could go, I'm just going to fly over each and every one of them and see if there's a shiny or I'm going to ignore all of them and just focus on the Zerua one because the Zerua one has a little star, which means once you clear it out, a new one will spawn in and mm. those will probably be alphas. Um, or I'm going to like check this seal and then just clear out the first wave and then go over here and check this man tyke and clear out this first wave and then like end with the uh, uh, Hisuian Growlithe because it has the star. Like I think it just it gives you like a thought process or like a strategy that I think some people were maybe missing of like I don't know what to do. Like what am I doing right now? Am I just waiting for an outbreak? Am I? I don't know. I, I like that it's doing that. And I like that it's 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 10 minutes and it, it gives you the focus. And then at the end of 10 minutes, you're done. Like you kind of. I, I, I would imagine that is... it's helpful for people who it... struggle to make their own tasks. Yes. I But I mean, that's not going to change. I just think there's so little to do post game. <laughs> that when you've introduced something new. And you're like, and here's an artificial time limit. Yeah, but when you when you do the ten minutes, and you go back, you're almost always gonna have another one. Uh, that has not been my. Oh my gosh, situation. I get them so much. No. I I see them very rarely. 
Like, I think there was only, I think, I, I think for me, because I, I, I've done such a hand, I've, I've done so many of them now. I've gone through the gate in Jubilife and there's like nothing. And then I just go back into town and go back out. And then there, there's, I've never had to do it twice. I'll go through the I'll go through the gate of Jubil Jubilife. Nothing's there. I'll go to the uh, the field lens. I come back. I go back through, and now I have like two of them. I've never had to do it twice. Like I feel like I get so many. I don't know if that's because I'm like rank ten in the decks. I don't know if that's I don't know what tr triggers that. How many stars do you have? The the ten the ten no ten the, yeah the ten stars ten stars gee. I mean it definitely. It's definitely better. So, like, on one hand, it's like we can't reset for outbreaks like we used to. On the other hand, I no longer have to just sit there for 35 minutes and wait for a distortion to pop up to hopefully maybe get a Rowlet. Oh, yeah. I I, I like Massive Outbreaks because they've added ways to find them if you get lucky. I think, I think the time limit feels arbitrary and weird. And mostly, I, I I I tend to not like it when you can feel the developers make a change because they're like, play our game. No, not that way. I, I don't like it when they do a big change. They're going to offer all these things, and then it's clear that they were just like, well, we don't like how you're playing our game. I, I don't like feeling that in a game at all. Um, and I feel that with massive outbreaks... And the time limit and the the rareness of the berry that they introduced, it's just like I don't know what you're I don't know what you're doing here other than saying we only want you to play this way, and this is the way that we've decided that that's going to be, and we're going to take away the ways that you were doing it before because reasons. I think it, we don't want our players to turn on and off for video game is pretty good reason. Mm -hmm. I, why? I mean, people are doing it post game, and we're doing it for everything. Like there are certain things that you 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 had to get to certain spots in the game to get it, and people are going in and out of like. Do you really think them that their gameplay was go to a land immediately turn around go back to Jubilife to see what spawned go into a land immediately turn back to Jubilife and is that the gameplay that they wanted? Because that's the gameplay that they're encouraging. <laughs> I mean that seems that seems like we just don't want you to turn off our game, but we do want you to run between a gate fifty times until you get the thing that you want. Doesn't seem like an improvement by any stretch of the imagination. I think I think the problem. I mean, like people are always gonna like min max. People are always gonna like try to find like the most efficient way to do something. I just can't think of like another game series where you 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 power off your game over and over to get something done. Like even in Animal Crossing, when you're villager hunting, like the game force saves through. Like you, you have to like grind out those tickets and, but you you don't like reset to get your like tickets back because like the the correct villager wasn't on there. Like I can't think of a Mario game where you're turning it off and turning it back on. Well, I mean, there's not a lot of games that have a collection aspect that yeah. are limited resources. I mean, there are things like there are plenty of people who ran a dungeon in one of the older Final Fantasy games. Like it didn't drop. So I'm resetting because I need to run that again because that was my one shot. Like they've gotten rid of a lot of those because they realize that isn't necessarily fun. But also there's a one once you get it and you're done sort of a thing. It's, it is a unique Pokemon experience that they have encouraged this behavior. And I hate to say this, Greg, because it only it only fuels your fire. <laughs> Here we go. But are, are we getting close to the fact that there might be a possibility where autosave cannot be turned off? Absolutely. <sighs> And I say that because this specific game is the first Pokemon game where there's an option that says, like, automatically connect me to online. And then automatically, what is the other one? 
It's like automatically connect me to online, and then the other one is like always keep me online, I think. Yeah. And that's for the bag stuff. Yep. For the satchels. For the yeah. satchels, yeah. And I think the satchels is great. I think I think it is one of the better like for a game without multiplayer, it, it does feel I don't know why. Maybe it's just me. But like when I'm on a map and I finish my mass mass outbreaks, before I go back, I'm like, well, I can grab the satchel. Oh, and the satchel's on the way. Oh, and I should like there's just two I'll just I'll just I grab mean, them all. Like, grabbing I, I satchels like, is very peaceful. Like I spend a lot of time where I'm like, I don't play, interact with anything else in this game, but I just want to go get people's satchels. Like it is a it is a simple, calming, definitive goal that I can fly around and and I feel like I'm helping other people in the game. Like that is an enjoyable experience. Yeah. But are we getting to a point where they're like, yeah, you can't turn off autosave because we don't want you doing this? Absolutely. And I feel like that is a better solution mm. than than what we have right now. Yeah. I uh, I mean my, I'm also I will say this because of TikTok. I am also on just drop the shiny rates at this point. Like just drop them to 1 in 500 as a, as a start because it's still 500 and that's a lot. No, I think I think the shiny rates are fine and I think uh, I I think that's like a different conversation of you have you have you have one core audience being like shinies are too easy now. And then you have and another I I strongly am in that they should start getting easier because I have started to see more weird gatekeepy shinies are useless. Like they've uh, the the selling point of shinies is that they're useless. That okay, is, okay, that this is the is, prime feature. This is this is the difference though. But they they did make incredibly rare shinies, and people are just too excuse my language. They're just too dumb to see them. <laughs> like. Okay, so you have you have one core audience that are like shinies are too easy. These are these are people that um that like pride themselves that they they took eighty hours to find a single shiny. These are the people that like don't like the shiny arm sh charm. These are the people that like think that like let's go Pikachu or some of these method hunts really like ruined it for them. Right? There's like a gatekeeping nature to that. Yeah, and, and I then hate there's, it. There's a whole other audience that. And I and I see some of these people. Obviously, my my vision of all the Pokemon fans are limited to my own Twitch channel. But you know, when you have a bunch of people being like, I "I've played this game just as long as everyone else here. I haven't gotten a single shiny. Like, is my game broken?" Like, there are tons of people that have done that. Like my wife, um, she's forty hours in. She's never she hasn't seen a shiny. That doesn't mean she hasn't had a great time with Legends. She's she really really likes Legends, and and Legends solidified that she will never go back to BDSP. Um, and I don't blame her, <laughs> but, but I think in the sense of like, if you are specifically, they, they, they have created, um, and I want to say this was maybe like, I think sun and moon was kind of the big point of this. They have created a method. They have created methods that have made it easier to get shinies for people who want to like get a shiny. Like I want to get, I've never gotten a shiny. I want to get a shiny execute in Sun and Moon. This is the thing I have to do to get it. Or in Let's Go, I want to get a shiny Ekans. I'm going to keep catching Ekans. That's what they told me to do. And then a shiny Ekans will pop up, right? They've created a method to do that. And in Legends, they created a method for rare shiny Pokemon. They were alpha Pokemon. I want an alpha shiny Zerua. That is really hard to get, even if you're doing the methods. So they, they have satisfied both people. It's just the people that are gatekeeping refuse to see that. And oh, they yeah. just general blanket statement over. They did this in Sword and Shield. And again, those people refuse to look at it. So if in Sword and Shield, you could, you could Masuda method, right? I'm not talking about the dumb stars. I'm not talking about squares and and, and whatever squares and sparkles. <laughs> Ultras. I'm not talking about that stuff. In Sword and Shield, they introduced marks, and they introduced different levels of rarity on the marks. So let's let's just say it was you 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 caught the 500 Pokemon. It was a one in. I think if I think if you catch the 500 Pokemon, and then you get the brilliant, it's like a one in 555 chance of it being shiny, right? 
and increase the odds. Otherwise, with the otherwise it's one in thirteen sixty five, and if you don't have the charm, it's one in four thousand. So, if you got a shiny in Sword and Shield, and it, it you, great, you got a shiny, but you could also get a shiny with a mark. But you could also get a shiny with a rarer mark, a personality mark. You could also get a shiny with a one in a thousand chance of it having a mark. Like they created something that shiny hunters wanted rarer shinies a marked shiny is significantly more rare than uh you know your your 30 squirtles from community day your 30 squirtles from community don't have that mark and at the end of the somebody might be like well i don't care about marks you're the one arguing <laughs> about the rareness of a slightly different color Pokemon, and you want something to be more rare. They gave it to you. Yeah, you're refusing you to see, see it. you can't see marks. You can't. That's when I put out my Pokemon in the Pokemon battle, nobody sees that mark. When that you Pokemon. select the mark, it will come out and it will say, like, Cramorant the Peckish. It will, it will show to people that you do have a mark on it. Hmm. My thing is... I think alphas work more because they are visual, right? Yes. Like when yeah. when you oh, yeah. when you see that it's bigger in the wild, it is a more exciting thing versus you have to catch the shiny and then check if it has a mark on it. But for me, that was a great feeling, right? Like, oh my gosh, I got a shiny. Does it have a mark? Does it have a mark? Ah, it doesn't have a mark. Still exciting that we got the shiny. But they, th I think they've done a really good job at making shiny stuff more accessible and then giving those hardcore people something really rare to hunt for, whether that's alpha, whether that's marks. But those hardcore people are just so clouded by their anger that, they, that they're just going to like yell at everyone else because they're oh, like yeah. not satisfied. I just think at this point, the regular old shiny odds should be dropped just to, to help sort of hammer home that the point of these shinies is that they're pretty they don't need to have a use they you the fact that you spent 80 hours and somebody happened to stumble across it in the like the idea of time spent is more legitimate needs to die well and and we are they are lowering it every time i'm like just lower it to one in 500 just make it so that People who have never seen it have have a very good chance of having that exciting moment in your game. And you have all these other ways to make things more rare. So if you want to be gatekeepy about it only counts if it's alpha, give them that. But we are getting to the point because of Pokemon Go, which I think I love that Go made community days and made people like have to reassess how they feel about Chinese. And the fact that there's a bunch of people who are super, super salty about it. I think we need to lean. They need to lean much harder into that trend. Put but Pokemon Go, Go also in. did this, right? Yeah, like, they have. You, 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 it's very easy to get a shiny Squirtle if you played the three hours it was available. Now... Good luck finding a shiny squirrel. I don't even think squirrel's spawning right now, so good luck. Like, <laughs> but like Pokemon Go did the same thing, right? Yeah. Very easy to find shiny during community day. Now we put a hat on it, and it is not easy to find. And it's the same as like shinies, and then shinies with marks, shinies or alpha shinies. Like they they have they they have really I think made shinies accessible to people. And made them rare enough where when you find a shiny that you get excited. And we see this all the time that people still get excited during community mm -hmm. days. Community days are still successful because it's still fun to go out and find these shiny Pokemon. But then they have made rarer shinies, alphas, marks, Pokemon with hats. Um, and I don't think dropping the shiny rate will change the complaints because the complaints are coming no. from people that are super gatekeepy and they need to realize that they have done these rarer things for you you're just refusing to accept them because you're uneducated or because you <laughs> you you're stuck in your ways or because like you refuse to see that like that these are truly like actually rare I'm just saying I want them to lean into it harder so those people get more angry and then quit the series and I never have to deal with them. Hey, they increase the this shiny charm from I plus want. two to plus three. 
I've I have always been at an advocate of video games rewarding you for your time. So the fact that both Sword and Shield and Legends are like the more you catch or do for a specific Pokemon, the more it increases the shiny for that Pokemon. Um I think that's great. I think there are people out there that like they care about shinies, but they care about shinies for specific Pokemon. Like yeah. I, I met somebody that was like, I'm done with Legends. And this was after two weeks. And I was like, you're done with Legends? And they're like, I, I completed the Pokedex. I caught Arceus. I shiny hunted the five Pokemon I cared about. There's nothing for m- more for yeah. me to do. Because the default was like, just shiny hunt. And he was like, I yeah. don't. I don't, I don't I don't care about like shiny BD. Like I don't care. Like I, I wanted shiny Zaru. I got it. I wanted shiny Growlithe. I got it. I got the other three I wanted why would I shiny on Pokemon? I don't care. I, I was like, I respect that. Like, that's, yeah. Like, that's how I feel about Kanto. Like, I don't need to do <laughs> any Kadabras. I just don't. Like, yeah, sure. It's a Kadabra. Like, even before they, like, patched the Daybreak stuff, if a Kadabra popped up, I was like, I have zero interest in, yeah, you're right. It could have, it could be shiny right when I get there. It has increased shiny odds. I understand. I just don't care. I just, I just don't need it. I got other things to do. I got to get more sticky gloves. I just want outbreaks with a perfect thing to be 1 in 25 like a community today. That's all I'm saying. Just really lean into it. Really make those people blow a gasket and give up to go find whatever gun in Destiny they care about now. Mm. I saw a Destiny 2 trailer, and I'm like, this looks good. And then it said Destiny 2 at the end. And I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> oh, no, Destiny's good. <laughs> um, this is why I always hated the, uh, the like, the phases. That's like a common term in, in shiny hunting. They're like, I phased five times. I was like, what does that mean? What so, does that mean? Okay, so w- w- how this started, I'll give, you a little, I'll give you a little history lesson on shinies. There's like a, a YouTube video out there. I, I'm, Wait, I, is this the thing where they caught... A different one and yeah. Oh, that is so. Ugh. Okay. Okay. So so here, I'll give you a little mad. history. Give you a little history lesson of how silly shiny hunting can be. Um, I don't remember the exact YouTube video. I'm just gonna paraphrase. You get the gist of it. There's like a, a there's like a YouTube video out there where a guy goes like, I went a hundred thousand encounters for a not to, a shiny not to. And when, when you see the title and the, 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 the video, you're like, oh, you have the worst shiny luck ever. Oh, my gosh. I feel so bad for you. How did you go so long? for 100,000 encounters. So this is the, the, here's what happened. He, this, this person, I shouldn't say he. I actually, I don't know. Uh, they, <laughs> they went into the safari zone in, I believe it was Heart Gold Soul Silver. Uh huh. And not to in a specific in the safaris again. I'm gonna get some of the numbers wrong. It, it, you don't have to write in the YouTube comments. It just the 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 point of the story still stands. Oh, now who's afraid of the YouTube comments? <laughs> um, it it was like a five percent chance for not to in this patch of grass, and they ended up catching eighty different shinies before they caught the shiny not to. So they added all of those numbers up together. Like, oh, I went 8,000 and I got a Parasect. Oh, I went 5,000. Oh, I got a Nidoran. Oh, I went 10,000. I got another Parasect. So they added all of those together and they finally got the shiny not to. So they're like, I went 100,000 encounters for a shiny not to. Now, there's there's so many issues with this. One... I mean, technically... Yeah, correct. Correct. <laughs> correct, yes. One, I, I, I personally feel like phasing is a way to be like, feel sorry for me. I didn't get my target and my number is big. I don't I mean it's a clickbait. I don't I don't think I think if you are if you're if you're hunting for a specific Pokemon and you get a different shiny, I understand that there might be some frustration there, right? Like I I probably wouldn't be frustrated. I'd be like, "Whoa, I got a uh, I got a one in eight thousand Pokemon. It wasn't the one I want, but I got it." What if it was a Kanto? Yeah, well, you know, it depends. You know, does it is it in, <laughs> you, you know does it have a mark? Does it not have a mark? No, is no a mark. Kanto with a mark and a ribbon and a top and a hat ribbon? and a uh-huh. cane and a dancing shoe. 
to you you could you you could have hunted that not to anywhere the, the not to appears on other routes at a higher percentage right you could also have taken that not to to the daycare and masood it um there there's there's many ways to get that not to um three is if you were to be like this is this is where the value thing comes in like if you were to say my not to is very valuable or more valuable than your not to because I spent all this time and it took a hundred thousand encounters. Okay, let's let's humor this for a second. Trade it. Trade it and tell the person you're trading it to you spent a hundred thousand hours on it or sorry a hundred thousand encounters on it. Do you think the other person is going to be like, hmm, yeah, well, you see this shiny coughing I got. I actually got it while I was in the cave and my leg was in my leg was uh, under a rock and I survived off the cave drippings from the stalactites off of the ceiling. And while I understand that it took your not to longer you can understand the emotional and physical pain I went through to get this coughing. So I do think that your not to isn't worth as much as my, like, no one cares, right? One of my longest hunts ever was a shiny Articuno in Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. Some people might be like, oh, Steve, you went really long for the coughing. No, that coughing was a one in 8,000 chance. And yes, I did go two weeks on it. I went a month with the shiny charm for a shiny Articuno and let's go. It was my longest hunt ever. I caught that Articuno. I boxed it. I never looked at it again. Was I excited when I got it? No. I was excited that it was I was excited that it was over. But I there's I cannot go to a showroom. I cannot go to uh antique roadshow. I cannot go to another person and be like, this Articuno is very valuable. <laughs> I need something of value from you. What pain did you go through to trade me, right? I understand that there's like an emotional value to that of like, oh, I went so long to get this. Great. Don't need to feel sorry for you. I don't need you to play it up that you, uh, oh, poor me. I got 80 shinies before I got this one. Like, no, you're just, you're fishing for something. And I ain't giving it to you. I'm not interested. Now, if you were to say, I got a shiny, authentic synesty, I would be like, yeah, you. That that's very cool. Because there's only, at this point, in Pokemon, one way to get that. You cannot masu that method for it. You got you you it's a one percent chance in these fields. And yes, I know there's like kind of a ways to increase that, but like a shiny authentic synesty is more rare because there's only one way to get it. A shiny trubbish with the rare mark is significantly more rare. A shiny alpha Zerua is more rare than in a, a shiny Zerua. Like they, they like again, they did it. They made a way to actually show that these shinies are more rare versus I caught a shiny Feebas in Go versus I caught a shiny Feebas in X and Y using chain method versus I caught a shiny Feebas in Sun and Moon using SOS versus I caught a shiny Feebas in Sword and Shield using Masuda method versus I caught a shiny Feebas fishing for the 1% and it was really hard and therefore my shiny Feebas is worth more because the odds were 1%. No, because there's so many other ways for me to get shiny Feebas. Don't tell me your sob story to make your Feebas more rare. You did that to yourself. <laughs> like, it's just, it, they're just, it's just a weird gatekeeping thing of mm -hmm. like, like, if I wanted my Zubat to be more rare, I will hang upside down as I hunt it. And then when I get it, I can be like, well, you know what? I spent $100. Uh, I spent 100 hours hanging upside down as I hunted the Zubat. My Zubat is significantly more rare than you. Checkmate. That's how ridiculous people sound when they're, Here, like, trying to justify the wrong. rareness. Here is my new Gen 9 wish. 100 BP shiny paint. You give it an item, it switches it to the shiny.
like you can make any hunt specifically <laughs> rare, right? Yeah. But also, there are other ways to get it. Like, yeah, you could, you could, you could fish for a one percent fee bass on a route and then hope that you get the shiny one percent fee bass. You can also refuse to get the shiny charm and do the same thing. You can also refuse to not get the brilliance and make it more hard. You can also um, take a Senta, uh, a Pokemon with, um, what is it called, Flash Fire, and go to an area to force more Fire-type Pokemon to spawn and then say, like, oh, I was hunting for the, the Pika Peck. But I made it, I, Pika Peck's normally like a 30%, but now that I'm flash firing, I've reduced the Pika Peck. You, you could make any hunt more rare <laughs> if you wanted to. I don't know what weird bragging rights you are looking for. Because I promise you, most shiny hunters, they're doing their own thing. They're catching their own shinies. They're putting them in the box, and then they're moving on to their next one. Like, And unless you guys are starting some weird black market of like, how much torture did you put yourself through before you needed to trade it? None of you guys are trading these shinies. If anything, Community Day has made shinies better because it's like yeah. I miss Community Day. Yeah. Did you did, did do you have an extra shiny Beldum? Yeah, I have a ton. I would love to trade you an I extra shiny 50. Beldum. This is what I this is my it's my ideal future. I have fifty of them. Absolutely. I have more than I, just I want ever them to could remove need. shinies I, from the game altogether. How's that for a hot no, take? No, no more shinies. I like some of the colors better. <laughs> No. <laughs> this is off IGN. $250,000 of Pokemon merch reportedly, reportedly stolen after a thief breaks through the store wall. Two full storage rooms were cleared out. Uh, so we'll need Greg's expertise here. Um... An independent gaming store in Minnesota reportedly had around $250,000 worth of Pokemon merchandise stole by a thief who broke through the wall during the night. Fox 9 reporter Mary McGuire tweeted security camera footage below of the alleged break-in and showed a man crawling into Punch-Out Gaming in Forest Lake. According to McGuire, who spoke with the store owner, the thief emptied two full storage rooms of products that included high-value items like sealed booster boxes of Pokemon cards worth up to $100 each. Uh, the post on the, the Facebook page shared further footage of the break-in and said, This guy broke into the neighbor's store, cut holes through the wall, he took cash, and over two hundred k worth of product. The next door unit, oh boy, next door. The next door unit is reportedly, uh, reportedly, reportedly empty, and the thief broke into there before forcing their way through into. Oh, I see. Not next door. The app. Whoo! I was worried yeah, for a second. I was like, that what is that a problem? Um, they broke into the building next door to Punch Out Gaming mm -hmm. and then got through. Got it. Uh, the shop shared in further Facebook posts that they will continue to operate as normal and has received a significant support from the community and other gaming stores who have helped resupply it with products. It didn't look like the thief took any of these Pokemon plushes. Poor Charizard no, and Dragonite. No, the Dragon plushes Knight. are just scattered on the ground, unloved. Feels so it's bad. Very, it's very hard to resell plushes. Well, I mean, if you're going to steal it, take the cute things, too. I mean... Take up a lot of space. As as as, as Will <laughs> knows from moving me from one state to another. Mm -hmm. Plushes take up a lot of room. This is very true. Or they take uh, bins. Full, full <laughs> bins. But those bins are lighter than the other bins. So That's true. <laughs> they are lighter. They just uh they just fill the space. Uh Greg, where is this place? Uh it's in Forest Lake. Okay. So it is about half an hour north of St. Paul. Have you been? No. Why would I go to Forest Lake? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. It's like halfway to Duluth. <laughs> it's like there are 15 gaming stores between me and Forest Lake. Why would I drive half an hour out of my life to go to Forest Lake? I I don't cuz you cuz you know punch out gaming. I mean, now that I'm aware of them and they need help, maybe. Like, oh, we can yeah. go maybe do we'll a special. And spend some money. Yeah. We can do they a got special... a chikorita plush on the floor. They, they, you could be like, hey, 
I saw your Facebook post, and uh, do you still have that specific chikorita that the thief <laughs> the probably that... stepped on? How about the one SBN that looks like it's seen things sitting on the floor? Because <laughs> I want that one. I was trying to figure out why wouldn't you just not break into the store through the front door if you went to the next door one. But they cut the but, hole in between the two shelves, so it's like it's almost yeah. like they had like insider information of where to cut. Right? I I think they just I mean, I think they just got lucky. Like we they're not showing if there's other areas where they tried to break through and ran into shelving. Sure. But yeah, Forest Lake is yeah, about half an hour north. We can definitely go if you want. It's a tiny First hand reporting. Business yeah. expense. Business expense. I mean, it's, a, it's in a tiny strip mall, too. Next to Fusion Design Studio. It, it First really, Nail Spa. Really, the, the, the news of this article is they... It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whether they could eat not... at Don Julio's Mexican restaurant. Okay. Make a day out of this. The, mm. the thief could have stole one booster box valued at $100, and the headline would still be the same here. Oh, yeah. $250,000 of Pokemon merch. Because I'd be curious of, like, how much Magic is there? How much Yu-Gi-Oh! was there? How much did they take any other stuff? Maybe it was all Pokemon merch, but... But when you read the article, it says the thief emptied two full storage rooms of product that included sealed yeah. booster boxes of Pokemon cards. It just seems like they like Pokemon still gets the clicks. Oh yeah, absolutely, Pokemon gets the clicks because everybody's heard it. If you say they stole five thousand dollars of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, people are like, "What is that?" <laughs> you have to say they stole Red Eyes White Black Dragon. Dragon. Or dark we should get into Yu-Gi-Oh. Blue yeah, eyes, white dragon. Not blue eyes, white dragon. Yu -Oh. Red eyes, black dragon. Oh, that's no, how it breaks down. Not, nobody cares about that one. You've activated my trap card well, all along. Give me poke, poke question of the week. What's the question of the week? What's the question of the week? Man, the question of the weeks are bad this week. No, they're not. You have like three weeks worth because you didn't do it last nah, week. Nah, because they disappear because people in Slack oh, talk too much. You need to write them down. Yeah. Uh, Robert says, which Elite Four area building would you most want to visit IRL? It's a, Ends it's a Castle. No. No, that's creepy. Nah, that's cool. Yeah, they got that bad lullaby music in that castle. Yeah, you just ask them to turn it off. I don't know. It's a tough choice because it, the Kalos one is beautiful. It's like a beautiful cathedral. Uh, but the Alola one is up there on the top of the mountain. You know, they had to destroy the top of that mountain to put, <laughs> to yeah. put their Elite Four up there. But I'm sure you get some great views. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't think I, there's anything special about Sword and Shield. It's just a stadium. It's just a stadium. No. Yeah. And I mean, the outside of Diamond and Pearl looks great. The inside is, is nothing bad. to sneeze at. I would say X and Y. I try to remember what the Kalos one looks like. It's like a big cathedral. Oh, yeah, yeah I like that one too. I'd do that one. That one or Ends Castle. Like, I want to be in the creepy castle with the weird playrooms and the and the. And the bad vibes. Um, well, Pokemon of the week. All right, Isn't last one week's... from YouTube. Is there nothing from YouTube? I didn't ask last week. Yeah, Dang. but that doesn't mean people don't post them. We already got a long show. Ugh. All we'll right, we'll last... have them. We'll have them post this week for YouTube. Last week's Pokemon of the week. We were enjoying our Spanish tinge to the program. Um, and I referenced the jolly Pokemon that looks anything but with its pouty face and eyes hidden beneath a wide-brimmed lotus sombrero. Uh, and I said something about its predecessor can be found among the watery weeds, but this week's Pokemon must get stoned before it can become carefree, indicating that you have to use a stone on it to evolve it. So if you guess the final evolution, well, that's not how evolution works. Doesn't Digimon. It's 
Frontier Cramorant. <laughs> Nothing's Frontier Cramorant. It's not available. Because you have a hat. It's water. Lombre. Lombre. Si, si senor. Lombre, I will say this. Lombre is one of the f- many Bad middle Pokemon evolutions that I like more than the final evolution. What? Are you out of your mind? I could see it. I could see it. Ludicolo is great. Could you see? Uh, I'm not. I am not commenting on how great or not great Ludicolo is. I am merely stating I like this middle evolution better. Lotad you, is is great. Can you see like Lombre and Nuzleaf just becoming a couple? Oh, absolutely! And just like just the cutest couple ever. We cannot get to together. the point of the show. We are shipping Pokemon together. <laughs> Yeah, are we yeah we can. It's a new thing. We have been through too much this episode. <laughs> Pokemon Shuffle icon is very good. Shiny is very very good. Man, Shiny I is love good. Lombre so much. So uh, cute. Lombre's evolutionary family has several unique attributes. They have a unique type combination. They are the only Pokemon with the dual egg group of Water One and Grass. They're the only Pokemon that can have the ability uh, Rain Dish without it being their hidden ability. They're the only Water-type Pokemon in the Grass Egg group. We don't have any more Grass Water Pokemon. It's just this. I believe you are correct there. That's actually kind of crazy. I love yeah. the fact that Bulbapedia continually brings up egg groups like anybody <laughs> in the past 15 years has cared about egg groups in any way, shape, or form. But thank you, Bulbapedia. I mean, they have a thing, and they're going to do it. Are you ready for this week's Pokemon? I am. Greg is not. but I'm good. Go. Here we go. Many Pokemon TCG players ask, which card, which features one of Greg's favorite Pokemon and was played by Will and is one of the few Pokemon stuffed toys owned by Will, has been banned from the Pokemon TCG expanded (laughs) format. The expanded format allows for the play of all Pokemon TCG cards dating back to the first Pokemon Black and White expansions. This card was banned because its second attack allows for the creation of an infinite resource recursion strategy that is relatively simple to achieve basically allowing for infinite retrieval of darkness energy from the player's discard pile. Intriguingly, both attacks on this Pokemon's TCG card and those for Oranguru, which has also been banned in expanded format for the same reason, are strikingly similar. There you go. I know it. Do you pay attention to the expanded banned and restricted list? (laughs) Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know exactly what card you're talking about, too. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Oh, you know, we could have spent like 30 minutes about PTCG Live because there was that Canadian beta, and uh, it was, uh, f- from what I experienced, real rough. Not good? Well, because you're uh, not Canadian, dude. That's yeah. true. It was uh, very specifically geared towards Canadian players, of which you are not one. That's true. Uh, but we will be back next week. If you're uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, thanks. I'll leave a question leave of a the week. This is comment, subscribe, hit the button. I don't know. Like seventy percent of the people who watch the podcast on YouTube don't aren't actually subscribed. So now now's your now's your chance to hit that button. Um, if you are listening on your favorite podcast app, thank you. Uh, specifically, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and you want to take a couple seconds to help us out, you can leave us a review in Apple Podcasts under the little five-star thing to hit the five, that stuff. That's super, super helpful. Um, if you're listening on Spotify, you do nothing because, you know, that's Spotify. Just enjoy it, I suppose. But we will be back next week. Thank you for listening. I will be still streaming on Twitch this week. Um, uh, we'll be the online international challenge zaptos is this weekend so i'll be doing battles if you want to see battles otherwise earlier in the week we'll be playing in legends but um thank you for listening this has been another episode of the pokemon podcast and we are super effective super shinies need to be less rare
Make them make them one and two. Make them every one. other one is a shiny. Make them gone. No more shinies. Yeah, All right, see, I gotta this, pee. This is the difference.